purpose in every one of us to be wise. So I have invited you for this Lent season to eliminate the negative thought of judgment. And two Sundays ago, I talked about judging others. And last Sunday, I talked about judging myself. This Sunday's talk is judgment or wisdom because it is in every single one of us to be wise. In unity, we teach the 12 powers, which are our 12 spiritual gifts or abilities that we all have access to, that when we learn to work with them, we change our lives. And the class that we're having right now, Powered Up, is the study of these 12 powers. Judgment slash wisdom is one of our spiritual powers. Because through judgment, as we do our work, as we start to connect with our spiritual guidance, it leads us to accessing that divine wisdom within us. It's our journey. So how do we get... How do we get from the kind of judgment we've been talking about to this divine wisdom? Because good, bad, right or wrong, we're surrounded by judgment all day long, aren't we? We make judgments all day long. I mean, our parents, our friends, our coworkers, TV, the news, the media, our sports casters, it's all about comparing one to the other. We're a culture that's attached to negatively comparing things. I mean, if you've been listening to the CDs during the week, if you've been thinking about these talks during the week, you've probably caught how many times you've been judging. I have. And you know, my family's been living with me. My 11-year-old granddaughter has, she's not well today, but she's been listening to these talks on judgment. And boy, has she been calling us all on it. You know, this is when you teach them. This is the age, because they, they get it. So in John seven twenty four, Jesus said to us, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. I have heard that scripture so many times. For me, it took me, my spiritual journey and my growing, my inner growing, until I finally got what that meant. Judging from appearance is when I'm judging from my personality, from my ego. It's when I do the criticizing and the comparing, and that separates, doesn't it? And it hurts others, and it hurts me. That's judging by appearance. But righteous judgment, righteous judgment is impersonal. What it does is it sorts out the facts. It evaluates. And another name for it is discernment. We know that name, don't we? Righteous judgment kind of sounds sometimes really a little too biblical. But discernment brings it into today's world. And discernment unifies us. It hurts no one. Judging according to appearances is emotionally based. It's my ego's view of being better or worse than someone or something else. It's kind of like an unconscious knee-jerk reaction. If you've been paying attention to going into, isn't it? It's all of a sudden, you're, you know, I'm right there and I'm judging. There it is. And it's that, it's that reaction, that immediate reaction to something. And it comes from the stories I make up in my head about this person or this situation. He or she is responsible for my frustration, my anger, my pain because of what he or she did to me or said to me, right? That's where all the judgment comes from, doesn't it? It boils it down. And when I make those judgments, I'm assuming that I have the power, that it's my right to determine who or what is good or bad. Isn't that what we're doing when we judge? Yeah. And then... I condemn, I pass sentence, case closed, mine made up. 
And as long as I hold the belief that I am better or worse than others, I am never going to experience that inner peace that we were working with in meditation. Because we're in meditation, that mind is still, isn't it? None of that judgment is going on. We can feel that peace. We judge, we humans judge in an attempt to make sense out of life, out of the relationships, out of the things happening around us, out of the whole world. And most of these judgments that we make come from unresolved pain, suffering, or fear from our past. It's our defense mechanism to minimize further pain and suffering. When I was, I think it was in the first grade, I had to, I lived country, went to a country school, had to walk quite a ways to go to school. And remember coming home, there was this great big farmhouse and this dog came running out. And fortunately, it was this great big stump and I climbed up on the stump and I was so scared. And the dog just stayed there barking. It wasn't big enough to get up there. But as a little kid, I cried and I just stood there shaking and my mother usually came to meet me, and that's where she found me. And of those of you that know me and have been around me, to this day, I am very cautious around dogs. I make a judgment of all dogs based on that experience. So if you look back and you pay attention to how you're judging and the things you judge, see if you can connect it to something that happened in your past. Because we create judgments around these things in the present that are similar to an, an experience in the past. I am the creator of my judgments. I am the creator of my judgments. I interpret my experiences. And because of that, my life, what I have right in front of me, what you have right in front of you now, is created by your judgments, right? That's how you're going to see it. If I'm making a judgment, that's how it's going to look. That's how it's going to come to me. Every time I think or speak judgmentally, I propel negatively charged thoughts into action. Every time I think or speak negatively, I propel negatively charged thoughts into action. That's what we teach in unity, the, the law of mind action. What I hold, what I think, manifests out here. And not that it's going to show up physically like that. It just means that's how I'm going to see it. You see, do you hear the difference? I'm judging all dogs that they're going to do the same thing that other dog did. After I'm with a dog for a while and I get comfortable, I go, oh, okay, it's not going to hurt me. But that initial, you know, so watch that. Watch those first initial knee-jerk judgments. So back to dogs. We've been, I know we've got so many dog people in here. <laughs> so when someone yells at a dog, if a dog gets yelled at, it doesn't know the meaning of the words, does it? But it feels the charge. It feels the energy behind them. And it responds. It gets out of the way. Do you ever find yourself avoiding people that negatively judge a lot? Yeah. Their energy is repelling you. It's pushing you away. A judging mind. Think about this. A judging mind is a suffering mind. A judging mind and a suffering mind and it causes further judging so right now check in with yourself and ask are my judgments pushing other people away and be honest with yourself just take a look at it not all judging is bad it's how we use it and it's the emotion that's attached to it. So, the Lone Ranger and Tonto. 
Does everybody remember who they are? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So they're, they're, they're on a journey across the prairie, and it's, it's, they got a long journey, and it's getting to be night, so they stop, and they set up a tent, and they eat, and then they crawl in the tent and go to sleep. Several hours later, Tonto's shaking the Lone Ranger, and shaking him, waking him up. And he goes, Kimosabe, Kimosabe, look towards the sky. What do you see? And the Lone Ranger looks up there and goes, well, Tonto, I see millions of stars. What's that tell you, Kimo Sabi? Well, Lone Ray says, well, it's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. What's it tell you, Tonto? Kimo Sabi says, uh, Tonto says, Kimo Sabi, you dumber than dirt. It means somebody stole our tent. Did you hear the judgment and the discernment in that? Lone Ranger, matter of fact, the facts, no emotion attached. And Tonto, he was really negatively charged, wasn't he? He did a negative put down from personality, from ego. The difference between judgment and discernment is the emotion attached to it. Discernment is non-reactive. It sees things as they are. It sorts, it observes the facts, considers the options, makes decisions without being swayed by our senses, by attachment to an emotional story. So we discern every day. Think about it. This morning, you had to choose the clothes you were wearing. That's a, that's a judgment, but it's a discernment. There's not a lot of emotion attached to it. And you had to decide what you were going to put in your coffee if you had coffee, or what you were going to eat for breakfast, the way you were going to drive to church. These are all judgments, but they're judgments without that attachment, without the energy. That's the difference. Our entire day is, is wrapped up with making little judgments like that, but they're discernments. So how do we know? How do we know when we're judging and when we're discerning? And again, by having family sit in, you get to have these discussions. And, oh, gosh, we were driving somewhere, and I made a comment, and my daughter said to me, was that a judgment? <laughs> and I sat with it, and I went, no, there's nothing happening in here. It was an observation. So that's the main thing. What's going on underneath it? My, the discerning mind is open. It's clear. It doesn't have opinions or attachments. It's, it's free-flowing. And it sees the oneness beyond the appearance. It can see beyond the appearance. And beneath it, beneath discernment, you just feel calm, you feel peaceful, you feel clear. But when I'm judging, my mind's rigid, it's clogged, it's got opinions and attachments, and it creates separation, it creates barriers, conflict, and alienation. And beneath my judgment, when you're judging, when you're, when you're judging from emotion, what's going on here? There's a turmoil, right? There's a tightness. There's an, there's an, an angst. There's confusion. It can even be fear. John, would you put that up one, please? So take these, take these two statements. He is such a liar. He's not a truthful person. Now, I'm saying the same thing, right? But you hear the difference. So what do I have to do to shift? How do we do that? From the emotion, from the charge, from the energy I'm shooting out to that calm place. That's what we work for. And we do that because we have to stop. We have to catch that judgment right in midstream. We have to be aware of it. So the first thing is starting to become aware of, noticing when I'm judging. Now hear this. This is important. The judging mind is not something to be judged. So don't start judging yourself because you're judging. <laughs> right? What we're on is a journey to conscious honesty. Do you hear that? Can I be honest with myself? And can I let go of all my stories that create my judgment? 
Because as I practice discernment, if I, as I practice catching those judgments each time, that judging mind starts to gradually dissolve. It starts to lose space in there. It's, it's what we do in unity when we use denials and affirmations. So there's a judgment. I am not going to give that judgment any power to ruin my day, to ruin this moment. Do you hear? That's a denial. And then you take that judgment and you replace it with a kind thought. So can you start doing that? Can you start trying to practice that? You know, monitor your judging. Here's the judgment. Oh, okay. You're not going to beat yourself up because you did it. You're just going to say, now what kind thought can I replace that with? You know, as you first do that, it's, gonna, it, it's not going to feel real. It's not going to feel comfortable. Maybe a little artificial. But as you keep doing it, as time goes by, it feels less and less artificial, and then it becomes more and more the natural way of thinking. You actually change the patterns of your thinking in your brain. It's actually a physical thing that starts taking place. And as you gradually gain control over your ego thinking, over your judging, you more easily can tap into the intuitive mind. Because the intuitive mind is, is underneath all that chatter, isn't it? All that mental gossip that's going on in there. And when I can stop that, when I can get under it, then I can tap into my intuition. And when I do that, I become more open. My mind becomes more open. I don't judge as quickly. I become more receptive. It's easier to just let things be as they are, see them as they are. And it's easier for me to connect to my spiritual guidance. I can't get to spiritual guidance if I've got all that mental gossip going on. And when I can connect to the spiritual guidance, I begin to understand myself and others. And then I move into a humbleness in my ability to stay balanced, to stay centered in the face of differences. Because we're all different. We're all different. And I love it. And that's why you're all here, because in unity, we love the differences. Because we can see beyond the differences. We can see the essence of the true person there. In unity, we call it the Christ self. And then, by doing that, I become kinder. I become more compassionate to those who are suffering, which means those who are judging me. So instead of reacting to their judgment, I can be connected to that place of peace in me. And I can be kinder to them. Kinder to those who suffer and who cause suffering. When I get there, when I can get there, and the more I can get there, that discernment starts to transform. It starts to change to the highest form of non judgmental intelligence there is. That's the elevated consciousness of divine wisdom. The ability to know God in all situations. So, here's what I desire. I want to move from this place where I have that knee-jerk judgment and get my body all upset and tight to this elevated consciousness where I know God in all situations. Can you feel the difference in your body? Can you feel it? That's why you're here. Because you know that's what you want. That's what brings you here. It takes faith. It takes faith to trust this process of moving from judgment to discernment to wisdom. And it takes strength to stick with it, despite the appearances out here. And that is why it is so important to take time to be quiet. Five minutes to be still pray, to meditate, until you feel that connection. I hope you felt it in the, 
in that meditation today, that connection to that, that very present that's always around us. Right here in this room right now, we see bodies. But you can feel when you move into the, that, that intuitive place in you, you can feel the energy of every person in here. And then you can feel the one energy. That's our ability. We can all know everything without ever knowing why. We don't have to know why. And as you do this, what we do is we leave the prison of our judging mind and we enter the unlimited freedom of divine wisdom. Today's daily word was perfect. Take it and use it this week. Start every morning by reading today's daily word. It was really the message that I'm giving you. So this Lent, we have a picture for you. And it says, my goal in life is to be as good a person as my dog already thinks I am. Now, if you can start doing that, if you can start practicing that, you have begun your journey from judgment to wisdom. God bless you.